this cards it's the end of year show where we review <laughs> everything we've done so it's a celebration <laughs> Sparkling pink alcohol. I think it's about time that we talk about the best and worst films of 2012. The whole year. Yeah. We've been doing Why So Serious for a year now, so we feel we're qualified to talk about the best and worst films of 2012. Of which there were a lot of both. There were a lot of films. I counted. I've seen 277 films this year. Wow, I didn't count. God damn it. So the fifth best film of 2012, the whole year, Mm -hmm. was... The Artist. And the reason it's number five is because Rory and I don't agree on this one. It was my number one film of the year, but because Rory doesn't agree with me on this one, I've we fought it out. We sorted it out, we argued, we fell out, we stopped talking for about three days. Then we sorted it out and we decided to put it as number five. Yeah. yeah. It was actually quite low down on my list. It was right around the middle. It makes me feel like a bit of a cinematic Scrooge. Um, beautifully shot. Really warm and endearing. Um, the little dog in it, Uggy, he's absolutely brilliant. Um, and it's one of those films that's so stripped back. There's very little special effects, if any, actually. Mm. Um, no CGI, no cards. Well, maybe one card chase, but no explosions and all this kind of stuff. But it's all about the story, it's all about the performances, and it's warm and it's endearing and it's absolutely fantastic. The fifth worst movie of all year, of all of 2012, was. The Sweeney! <laughs> Uh, basically, it was a update of a classic 70s or 80s uh, UK TV show, ripping off Heat, ripping off The Dark Knight Rises, not nearly as good as it either, got to see Ray Winstone's bum, nobody oh, needed to see that, God, nobody needed got to that. see Plan B acting, nobody needed no. to see that. I don't know which was worse actually, Ray Winstone's bum or Plan B acting. I, I, I'm happy to live my life Take your knowing pick. I don't have to see either of those again. Yeah. Um, it was just... Very poorly made, very poorly scripted, no real redeeming features. Apart from Damien Lewis being in it, but then you have to wonder, if you're in Homeland, and Homeland is so good, what are you doing in this film? Mm. Avoid. Avoid. El Crapo. Mm. The fourth best film of the year of the year was The Grey. Like Unlike the marketing campaign, which would have you believe that it's taken with wolves, thank you. It is, in fact, uh, a very heavy film about men facing death Ugh. and are longing for one, you know, one more day of being alive to get back to their loved ones or wherever it is their individual reasons are for wanting to survive. I think that's why a lot of people were turned off by it when they seen it initially. They're like, he didn't even punch a wolf or nothing. But uh, he it did punch a wolf, didn't he? No. Well, he needs some wolf puncher. Yeah, I know that's what they were calling it. Yeah. But now. Yeah. Um, but it was uh, very well made. Liam Neeson won't ever get an Oscar for this kind of film, but it is fully deserving of an Oscar, his performance. So the fourth worst movie of all of 2012 was... A Few Best Men. An English guy meets an Australian woman on the holidays and brings his friends to Australia to attend his married wedding to her. Um, it stars Rebel Wilson and Olivia Newton-John and that guy from Love Actually, who's basically playing the same character, you know, that guy. It's basically the, one of the most offending movies ever. Um, it's completely over the top and ridiculous. It's not funny at all. Olivia Newton-John at one point decides to get off her face on cocaine and swing from a chandelier. Um, that yeah, she she's does. kidnapped and dressed up in lingerie and basically, having talked to Serena... Bellissimo from Spin One with Three, it's Plan B. She says that a few best men for her as an Australian is as offending as Leap Year was to us as Irish people. Mm. So that's really not a good write up. Third best movie of 2012 was Avengers. Yay. Marvel's Avengers Assemble. Is there anyone in the world who hasn't seen this film? Mm, I heard of someone down in Kerry who hasn't seen it. Mm. Uh, very funny, fantastic action sequences, uh, great acting, 
And Iron Man doesn't take centre stage, which was really nice because Iron Man's had the most standalone movies apart mm. from the Hulk, but they were terrible. Mm. Um, so you would think that Iron Man would be the one to kind of take over and be the leader and all the rest of it, but absolutely not the case. Everybody gets their moment to shine, which actually makes it really, really good and really, really stupidly funny. Yeah. These moments that happen so quickly that you're still laughing about them when they've finished. Just absolutely brilliant. Uh, Joss Whedon. Finally gets his moment in the sun. Thank, hero. thank God, Jeff. The hero of 2012. Yeah, yeah. Actually, Joss Whedon, if you're, you know, knocking around and you're watching this and you fancy having a glass of sparkling pink stuff with us, give us a call. We'd love to have a glass of sparkling pink stuff with you. The third worst movie of uh, all of 2012 was one I think you haven't seen. Alice Cross. No, I haven't seen it. <laughs> Truly diabolical. I think it will end up being the like action thriller version of Showgirls in like 15 years time. Mm -hmm. People will revisit and go, this is hilarious. I like, a, I like a movie that's so bad it's good. Yeah. Does it, uh, but does at it the go moment, into it, that territory? At, yeah, several mm -hmm. times. But at the moment, it's going to let it settle in so bad it's bad. The, direct, the director Rob Cohen has done good things before. But this is not one of them? This is not one of them. Yeah. So terrible. Avoid for now, and then revisit in five, five years and see where we're at. That's that's my advice. We'll do that. We will come back to you in 2017, even if we have gone off to become rock star journalists somewhere else, and Rory's become a famous film director and stuff. I'll have died by then. Well, I will definitely revisit Alex Cross in 2017 and let you know how it is. Aged. Review it at my um, funeral. Okay. All right. That can be your eulogy. This is what he wanted. Second best film. Of all of 2012. All oh, 365 days of it. Was. Guy Four. Which I've sang it before. We've done it, so we've done it, we're not going to do it again. It's, it's old, we've done it. Yeah. Definitely one of the best Bond films ever made. Ever, ever made. I watched all of the Bond films um, in the lead up to Skyfall. There are some excellent <laughs> ones in the back catalogue. Don't get me wrong, there's some brilliance in there, but Skyfall just brings Bond to a whole new level. Yes, awesome director Sam Mendes, awesome cinematographer uh, Roger Deakins. Oh yeah. Awesome score by Thomas Newman. Love you, Thomas Newman. The best Daniel Craig has been since he took over from Bond. Absolutely. Dame Judi Dench put to the centre of the story, becoming the oldest Bond girl uh, to date. Good for her. Yeah. The hotties that were Seventeen and Naomi Harris. Yes. Uh, the villain, Javier Bardem, my villain of the year. Amazing villain. Best villain in years. Mm. Years. Uh, amazing action sequences. Uh, the story, don't pay too much attention to it because you could start putting out threads. Oh, absolutely. And the whole thing will come apart like this jumper. But Just um, go with it. Like a car chain scene in J any James Bond film, just go with it. Just yeah. go along for the rest of it. Don't question the laws of physics, just well. enjoy the braids. Um, um, the cinematography you mentioned, Roger Deakins. I did. Amazing. It's beautiful. Stunning cinematography. Some of the best I've seen. Probably ever. Mm. Um, there's an amazing sequence on a skyscraper, and then there's an amazing, amazing sequence at the end where everything's orange and the silhouettes, and it's just fantastic. It's, it's just beautifully it's a gorgeous shot. action film. Yeah. Second worst film of all of the year. Yeah. It was released way back in January, yeah, way, way back in the start of January. Mm -hmm. Nobody else seems to remember this film, but I remember the I remember. utter endurance test that it was and at the time. This is going to end up being like Alex Cross, because at the time I do remember leaving the cinema and laughing at how terrible it was. Mm. And if I revisit it with a few of these pinkies in me, then that could be rephrased. You could be rephrased, <laughs> you're dead right. A few of these glasses of alcohol in me. Ah, oh, sneaky alcohol. Uh, I'm sure I'll have a great time. The Dark Stower. Yeah. Emile Hirsch. And Co. Yeah, I mean, Emile Hirsch, and you Cole. recently tweeted... Uh, that Emile Hirsch was terrible in Killer Joe. Mm. Thank you for saying that. Emile Hirsch was awful in Killer Joe. And in fairness, I don't think I've seen him in a film that I've actually thought his performance was anything less than terrible. So, he's awful. I think about to remember anything he was in. Uh, anyway, The Darkest Hour, Aliens Attack and Vaporize Humans. But thankfully, there's a group of hot American students or something in, Russia in or Moscow to save the day. Or They're IT people who create apps 
so naturally they'd be good when it comes to making weapons to defeat invisible aliens because the budget wouldn't stretch to see actual aliens. In fairness. Yeah. The first time that happens you think, oh that's kind of cool, mm. that kind of looks fun and kind of cool. Mm. Second time it happens you're like, yeah okay, and the third time it happens you just think, oh god. I know what happened now. Yeah. Then you realise it's going to continue and down that way. All of the characters are really uh, cliched, like one smokes, so you know, she he's going to bite it and yeah. girl's having an affair with someone she shouldn't be and she's going to die. So it's really cliche. Anyone um, who wasn't American really was buggered. Yeah. Um, directed by the guy who did the awesome run at your door, so it was quite disappointing because I loved mm. that movie. Um, the visuals were okay. It actually made me want to visit Moscow rather than ever want to see the film again. True. True. But that's about it. That's, that's the only positive thing I can say. That and I think, again, after a few drinks, it could be genuinely funny fun to watch. I reckon so. Because there's some, so. some serious events in that film where you're just like, how did that happen? So, how did that happen? if you want to see us, drink a bottle of pink fizzy stuff each and then watch The Darkest Hour and for Mary and Brian to film us and see our reactions. Um, comment, like us, and let us know because we'll do it. Number one film of <laughs> uh, all of 2012 was. Shame. Directed by Steve McQueen, who did an absolutely fantastic job. There's very little dialogue actually in this film. It's all about looks and glances. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, basically all of this that Rory's doing over here. It's all about this. <laughs> and Carrie Mulligan's crying face. Which, you you know, Ugh. you're either going to love it or you hate it. Yeah. If he hadn't been up against um, Jean Dujardin at the Golden Globes, I think he probably would have won if Sean, if the artist hadn't been released in the same year in America. Mm. Um, totally robbed for an Oscar. Probably the best performance of the year. Yeah. Um, in fact, definitely, because I saw the artist last year, so I don't count it as this year. So, beautiful cinematography as well. New York has never looked better, and it's just a really engrossing portrait of someone whose life is falling apart. It's, it's a difficult film to recommend, because as much as I loved it, I can't say certain that anyone would ever watch it twice it is tough going i've seen it once and i think i'm about ready to see it again so it's I maybe a yearly viewing sort of one but it's, it it's is. the kind of film actors probably would love to watch mm. in that the performance is just, it's like watching you know a master class it's like the master but with uh, a plot a story that man. you like yeah and now for the worstest film. the most pooey bad film of the year. And if you've been watching Why So Serious up until now, you will know what film this is. Oh yes you will. It is. It's been the benchmark yeah. of crap. Crap. Not one. Not two. Three stages. I would class this film as an insult against humanity. And that's pretty this much... This film is a war crime. It is a war crime. This film can't be saved by FEMA. No. Uh, to park all the way back to the January one that we did, I did at one point during the press show of this film, burst out laughing when I realised that an hour had an hour of the film had passed and I hadn't even cracked a smile once. And that sudden existential realisation made me laugh. And my, my other fellow, fellow reviewers were like, what is he laughing at? I think and I, I thought they lost all respect for me. I but think I, I threw a Maltesers at him at that point. It's not funny! You're not funny. But it was so unfunny, it became funny to me. But then, so, well but then done. I crashed because it was not funny again. Well done to the Three Stooges for being so bad that you've become our benchmark of crap. I look forward to seeing what 2013 is going to bring in terms of rubbishness that we can use as our benchmark mm. for next year. But until then. Yeah, because next year when, when, when we're awarding worst film, we're gonna we're gonna call it the Three Stooges Award. Award. Yeah. For worst film. We are. That's yeah. what you've done. Yeah. Farley Brothers. Just stop it. Just stop. So Don't, yeah. Just stop. That they have been our top five and bottom five films of 2012. Mm. I really look forward to 2013. I'm really looking. Forward I'm really to looking forward to that. That episode we do where we talk about stuff we're looking Ooh, forward to. Yeah, that's going to be really game. exciting. Stay tuned for that. But until then, Brogan, Rory, Mary, Mary. why so serious? All of 2012.